Hello everyone. Uh, I'll not take a lot of time uh, since it's the last talk for today. Uh, I'm Suyash. Um, I currently work for the Aztec Protocol, uh, and the work I'm presenting was done as a part of my master's thesis, uh, which is uh, Improve Plus, uh, which is essentially privacy enhancing proofs of reserves for cryptocurrency exchanges, specifically for Monero. So it's a cryptographic protocol. Uh, I'll not I'll avoid going into the uh, mathematical details, but just try to give like a high, high level overview of uh, what do we mean by proofs of reserves and what this technique is about. Uh, so exchanges, we all we already know. Um, if it's not your key, it's not your coins. Um, so a lot of people um, store their or, or trade in cryptocurrencies. Uh, and, and have accounts on cryptocurrency exchanges, uh, which facilitates uh, seamless onboarding or, uh, or, or even trading. Uh, but the problem is you, you have to trust the cryptocurrency exchange that your keys will be, uh, will be stored safely, which is apparently not the case. Uh, there's lots of cases of hacks, frauds, exit scams, lots of exchanges. Recently, there was this uh, FTX saga, uh, people using the user deposits for other reasons. Um, so so we, have, we have seen all of these uh, different uh, unfavorable scenarios uh, back since I think 2014 or even before. Uh, so Mt. Gox was the largest uh, exchange hack back in 2014. Uh, you had exit scams like Cotriga CX, which is still like a mystery and they have like a Netflix documentary apparently. Recent one, FTX as I mentioned. So all of these are um, not, not really favorable from a user point of view. If cryptocurrency needs mass adoption, right now cryptocurrency exchanges seem to be the only, um, not only but one of the main uh, sources for people to onboard to crypto. Uh, but if such things keep happening, we need some solutions. Um, one solution, which is not very popular for the masses, is to use hardware wallets where uh, your private keys are stored on a hardware wallet and they don't interact directly with the internet. So it's considered safer than uh, using an exchange, obviously. Uh, but again, this is very hard for uh, general people common people to use uh, and we are still far from having things like credit cards or uh, hardware wallet that that sits in a card that could be used uh, used for payments and so on um, so therefore this is not currently a viable option for a lot of uh, common people um, other option could be to solve the uh, problem of uh, exchanges or uh, the, the the inherent nature of trusting exchanges, if we could bring in some trust uh, using some math, uh, and that's what proofs of solvency are for, where you basically an exchange, if an exchange proves that it owns more reserves uh, than its liabilities, uh, then at least we can be sure that in case of any hacks or in case of any uh, unfavorable scenarios, the users could be uh, could could be returned their their hard earned money, uh, but but the problem with this is uh, the, the 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 kind of proofs of solvency or proof of asset uh, that that people talk about uh, are problematic because they reveal sensitive information about the they could reveal sensitive information about the exchange. Um, for example, uh, after this FTX problems, I think Binance released uh, a list of their uh, addresses, uh, which cumulatively stored like, I think $69 billion or something. Uh, but then this is very bad for Binance or the business of Binance, right? Because they have to reveal their uh, sensitive information about uh, their assets. Uh, so this could still be done for public blockchains, 
because Bitcoin, Ethereum are public blockchains and people can see what, what's the balance of assets given an address. Uh, but what about uh, private blockchains like Monero, uh, where it's not even possible to see what the balance is. Um, so this is still uh, just one aspect of proof of solvency, which is proof of assets. What about liabilities? So liabilities generally mean uh, the amount that users have deposited into crypto exchanges and the crypto exchange owns uh, owes to the users. Um, so proof of liability is even more difficult because uh, it is very difficult for an exchange to reveal customer data. Um, and therefore, proof of assets is slightly easier uh, to, to work around than proof of liabilities. Um, so coming back to proof of assets, today we are going to talk only about proof of assets. Uh, the protocol we have designed is uh, proof of reserves or proof of assets. Um, and, and the key idea for, uh, for, for a blockchain like Monero uh, is, to, is to prove the same relation that assets minus liabilities is, must be greater than equal to zero. Uh, but then we, we can't do this uh, with, with commitments. So let's say C is like a commitment. So, uh, sorry, C could be like a generator. So generator to the power assets is like a commitment to the, to the total assets. Uh, generator to the power liabilities is, let's say, a commitment to the total liabilities. And if you multiply uh, C to the power assets times C to the power minus liabilities, and if that is a commit, if you can prove that this is a commitment to uh, uh, a non-zero number uh, or some some number that is greater than zero, then that should be enough to prove uh, assets is greater than liabilities. Um, so so this is the main idea that that we use. Uh, so. Uh, there's 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 a few challenges that we need to uh, tackle before we uh, start using this equality that we saw. Uh, first of all, proof of uh, reserves with Monero is uh, is hard. Uh, so we have so we had two iterations of design of this protocol. First one is called Improve. Second one is Improve Plus. There was a, a big flaw in Improve design, which we'll see. Um, and we'll also see why uh, these proofs of reserves are hard. Um, so typically, like a Monero transaction, uh, the, the idea of using ring signatures to hide what your address is in, in a given ring is, is what Monero uses. Um, so so if, if P is your public key, let's say the green, green circle, um, then you just prove that you own one public key out of uh, 11 or whatever is the ring size. Uh, and corresponding to that public key, you, you also need to uh, supply some more information, which is called key image uh, to, to prevent double spending of that address. Uh, and as, as, as I already said, the ring signature basically proves uh, that the transaction sender knows one of the private keys corresponding to these uh, public keys in the ring and key image helps uh, detect double spending. So the proof of reserves protocol that we'll talk about today, uh, both of them are based on similar lines uh, because essentially what an exchange wants to do with a proof of reserve is it wants to prove that it owns certain addresses which could contain certain amount of money and then the sum of that money should be greater than a th uh, threshold. So as, as I said, the key idea here is uh, in, 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 in a normal Monero transaction, we just have one, uh, one public key that, that we prove the ownership of. Now we want something more. We want to prove that there's this unspent, there's this huge set of unspent transactions from which the cryptocurrency exchange will prove that it owns uh, a certain set of subset of uh, exchanges. So the way improve works is, is fairly straightforward. So let's say these green addresses are the set of uh, addresses owned by the exchange. So uh, the, the first thing that exchange will do is it will just choose like an anonymity set uh, 
to hide its own addresses, just like what we saw for the Monero transaction. Uh, and let's call this anonymity set as P anon. Uh, so for 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 each uh, each address each address that we choose in this anonymity set, there's a commitment which is defined something like this, uh, where G and H are uh, again this uh, these are generators uh, for which the discrete log between them is not known, assumed to be not known. Uh, Yi is the is is your blinding factor. It's it's like secret, uh, and Ai is the amount. So this CI will be a commitment to amount AI. Uh, so for each address the exchange owns, uh, what, what that means is basically it knows the secrets YI and AI. Uh, and that, that basically means that the address is owned by the exchange. So to do proofs of reserves, uh, we need to somehow prove that from, from given this anonymity set, uh, which is just a bunch of addresses, there corresponds some commitments. And from those set of commitments, there are certain commitments for which we know the secrets. So the first step, that first computation that we need to do here uh, is sample a random, uh, random scalar, ZI, and compute this quantity, CI prime. So we call it as modified commitment um, because it, lo it looks similar to the definition of commitment. Um, and if you see, we, we do like a conditional computation here where uh, the, 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 the modified commitment is, uh, is, is just G to the power uh, ZI, where ZI is the random scalar that we only know. So ZI is again uh, a secret that the exchange knows. Uh, and if if the address is owned by the exchange, it's just simple public key uh, computation uh, generator to the power zi. If it's if it's not an address uh, owned by the exchange, then we also multiply it with uh, with the commitment of, uh, of of that address, and we'll see why why we do that. So if we look at the modified commitment and uh, the original commitment that we have, there's there's a there's an implicit relationship between them. So if we just try to compute this quantity here, the commitment times the inverse of the modified commitment. So one thing that you'll see here is uh, if the address is not owned by the exchange, uh, then, then the modified commitment and the commitment relation is slightly easier. Uh, so there is no H term in that case. But when, when we have, when the crypto exchange owns that address, this now becomes a commitment to amount AI with a slightly different uh, blinding factor. So blinding factor becomes YI minus ZI, uh, which let's ignore for now. Uh, but the point is the, the, this quantity here modified, uh, sorry, commitment times modified commitment inverse that becomes like a commitment to the, the amount, original amount AI. Uh, for the addresses that the exchange owns, for the addresses that it doesn't own, it becomes a commitment to zero. So now the interesting thing is, if we sum all of these over the ring, uh, what we'll get is there will be some g term, g to the power something, and the h term will contain some of the amounts. And those amounts will be corresponding to the ones that are uh, owned by the exchange. Um, so therefore, this becomes like a commitment to the total reserves or total assets owned by the exchange. So this was what uh, we were trying to do, right? If we have a commitment to the assets and assuming if we have a commitment to the liabilities, uh, the exchange can do a range proof to prove that uh, the multiplication of uh, assets commitment times liabilities commitment inverse and that that it can prove that it's a commitment to a non-zero number so we take to one one thing from here but then we still need to prove that this C, the modified commitment was 
computed correctly as as the crypto exchange we need to prove that so how do we prove is using ring signatures uh, so we note that the modified commitment uh, has a certain structure um, so very simple structure here is zi can be thought of like a private key and the modified commitment becomes the public key uh, when the address is owned by the exchange when it's not owned by the exchange you can again think of it like a key pair where secret key is again zi uh, and public key is uh, modified commitment times the inverse of the uh, original commitment um, so so the point of showing this is we can compute a ring signature using these two public keys uh, the green one and the orange one uh, so green represents the the addresses that that are owned by the exchange orange represents uh, the for, for the addresses that are not owned by the exchange uh, and if we can give a ring signature then we basically prove that the structure of the modified commitment was correctly performed uh, because if if the exchange didn't know the zi or, or if the structure was not preserved then the exchange would not be able to uh, produce a ring signature so this is a regular ring signature uh, only thing that remains in improve protocol is we still need to prove that the addresses that we have included in our anonymity set uh, they are not already spent uh, and we saw that we used the notion of key image uh, to to prove that uh, an address is not already spent so therefore we somehow need to reveal the key image of of your original uh, address the the address owned by the cryptocurrency exchange so again for that you you use ring signatures on two public keys one is pi which is shown in green that corresponds to the address owned by the exchange and the orange part is again uh, for the addresses that that are not owned by the exchange so why this ring signature because we want to prove that when the cryptocurrency exchange is owned by the uh, owned by the ex sorry address is owned by the exchange we want to prove that that address corresponds to the correct uh, key image but we cannot just re reveal the key image directly because uh, that would just uh, re reveal which addresses are owned by the exchange therefore we give a uh, ring signature so the probability so so for an external uh, person this just looks like uh, the the probability of guessing which address is owned by the exchange is 50 percent so therefore we have this second linkable ring signature because we wa also want the key image corresponding to the uh, second ring signature so that uh, it, it so that the exchange can also prove that the the green address pi was not already spent um, so so this is this is essentially the improved protocol which is fairly simple uh, but there are very uh, very critical drawbacks of this one of which is uh, as is the case with general monero transaction this also scales linearly in the anonymity set size uh, but the problem but a larger problem here is the anonymity set size for exchanges is desirable to be very large uh, because the exchange wants to reveal uh, as much less information about what addresses it owns as it's possible so scaling linearly is 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 not not a great thing and therefore it adds limits on the anonymity set size but a more critical problem is uh, revealing the key image corresponding to the uh, corresponding to the addresses that the crypto uh, exchange owns uh, now why is this a problem because uh, if the exchange let's say spends from uh, the address which it included in let's say it gives a proof of reserves and proof proof of reserves in 2020 and then it spends that one of the one of its addresses uh, it spends the money in 2021 so any future transaction will reveal that 
the exchange is trying to spend from this from a particular address which is very dangerous for the privacy of the exchange so therefore this is not practical to be adopted and therefore we have improve plus um, which solves this this drawback um, so the key idea of improve plus is uh, we just look at the problem or write the problem in a slightly different manner um, so it's it's pretty mathematical but i'll just try to give a very high level overview which is uh, we define these binary vectors corresponding to the to the addresses that the exchange owns so for example if the the, the green address at position 2 is owned by the exchange so there will be one in in the first vector first binary vector uh, and similarly we can define the other binary vectors uh, the blinding factor y and the amounts will only be known by the exchange for uh, for for obviously for the addresses that it actually owns uh, commitments we'll have commitments corresponding to all uh, public keys in our anonymity set and of course the public keys uh, of, of our actual anonymity set there's a couple of other things like uh, key images corresponding to uh, the, the uh, i think apparent key images for for each of the public keys that i have not shown in the slide uh, but yeah those things uh, uh, yeah kind, kind of are obvious uh, so so the idea here is if we write the problem statement in this way uh, what we can do is we can say that a particular commitment uh, can be computed as uh, the commitment vector raised to the power of uh, the binary vector. So, for example, for jth commitment that the exchange owns, it can just compute it. Uh, it, take it, it takes c vector, it can raise it to the e vector, binary e vector. Similarly, it can write the relationship between the address it owns and the generator and the secret key. And similarly, it can also write the relationship between the, uh, the, the, the key image for the addresses it owns. Uh, so ij here is the key image, xj is the secret, secret key corresponding to that address. Uh, and, and the point of doing all of this is we can combine all of these relations uh, into a single relation. Uh, so the translation from separate equations to single equation is slightly involved uh, but but the idea is you just randomly come uh, sorry combine these equations with uh, powers of a, a random challenge uh, and and what that gets you is a relationship between uh, all of these public vectors so you see c uh, c vector p vector h vector all of these are public uh, and the exponents of that are secrets the binary vector ej uh, on the right again we have uh, ghi are public and the exponents are private and we get an inner product relation uh, be between the exponents or secrets um, so so the idea is vectorize all the relations and just combine them into one equation this is how the equation looks like this is from the paper uh, I, I have not expanded it here uh, so once we once we have this kind of single equation where all of the public information is in the base all of the secret is in the exponent uh, we can use a very powerful tool from uh, the bulletproofs paper uh, i think it was originally from a paper before bulletproofs but a lot of people give credit to bulletproofs paper um, so this this becomes uh, so so the so this inner product argument from the bulletproofs paper can be used because uh, if you look at the inner product argument here uh, all of the public information is in the base all of the secrets are in the exponents with some inner product relation between the secrets and and therefore we can use the same inner product argument uh, for, for this as well uh, I'll not go into the details as I said uh, but what what the uh, so inner product argument is pretty powerful 
because it reduces your proof size from linear to logarithmic in the total size. Uh, so total size capital N here is the total size of your vectors. Uh, so in this case, it's the number of secrets times the number of uh, addresses in your anonymity set because uh, so we have ej for all j that that belongs to the uh, exchange uh, so each size of each ej is n uh, and the number of uh, vectors ej is the number of addresses it owns um, so capital n will be n times number of addresses owned by the exchange so therefore the proof proof size uh, in in this case also it grows linearly with cap uh, with sorry sorry the anonymity set size uh, but the scaling constant factor is uh, is almost 12x so we get a lot of uh, proof size reduction um, generally um, improve plus proofs are 8x shorter than that of improve uh, yeah this is just a plot of the proof size uh, proof generation verification time of uh, mProof plus is slower than mProof because the protocol uh, mProof was very simple. You have standard ring signatures, linkable ring signatures, but in case of mProof plus, you have this huge exponentiation that that you need to compute, uh, and therefore the prover as well as the verifier work is is a lot more uh, in in mProof plus. Uh, although the proof verification is is much cheaper than the uh, in, in than the prover work, uh, although both of them are linear, uh, there is lot of uh, opportunities for batching, just like we do in usual Monero transactions. Um, so proof verification is almost eight x faster than proof generations. Um, so, so 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 what we achieved with this was. Uh, improve plus solves the critical uh, vulnerability or problem of improve and it makes it, it makes it almost practical to run proofs of reserves for exchanges uh, proof sizes are much smaller as I said because at some point the exchange will publish the, these proofs on chain and therefore there's a cost uh, associated with the proof size um, so smaller proof sizes are always better Therefore, it's possible today for uh, exchanges to run improve plus. Uh, is it practical though? That's that's still a question because if you, so, the numbers that that we ran, it takes almost two hours to run to generate a proof for anonymity set size of uh, fifty thousand addresses. Uh, so, for a big exchange like Binance, uh, if it owns let's say thousand Monero UTXOs or addresses. Uh, it's 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 almost inherently uh, will will ask to have the uh, anonymity set size as large as possible, uh, but it takes so this is on a commodity hardware, but still it takes two hours to generate a proof. Uh, and if we consider, let's take the entire UTXO set as the anonymity set, uh, because that would be the ideal case for exchanges to to preserve maximum privacy it would almost be impossible unless you have a very beefy machine uh, and still it would take hours to generate a proof. Um, so, so we have been uh, constantly working to uh, try out new protocols like SNARKs and STARKs to see what could, uh, what, what could speed up the prover and verifier time. Uh, verifier time is also critical because if these proofs of reserves are going to be included in the chain, uh, they will at some point will be validated by the miners or validators. Um, so uh, one of the project that that's uh, we, we have made quite quite good progress on is uh, actually coming up with a proof of reserves using the Nova proof system, uh, specifically for Monero. Um, so we'll we'll publish that as soon as uh, we have some results. Um, and the last thing is just. Uh, the couple of implementations that we have. One is in Rust, one is in the Monero source code. Um, so please feel free to uh, take a look and uh, throw questions at us. Thank you.